When someone dies, they don't have to worry about money anymore. But there is a surprising amount of money involved with dying. Why is it so expensive to die? The costs start racking up before death. Sure, there are those people who die suddenly and without any other associated costs. For instance, someone who drops dead of a heart attack, suddenly without any other health problems, or someone who's just out for a jog and has a piano drop on their head. Someone's going to be shelling out a lot of money for that, but it's probably going to be the piano company. For many people, death is a much more drawn out affair. For those who die of serious illnesses or at an old age, the odds are going to be there's a lot of medical expenses associated with dying. Dying can involve long-term hospital stays, time in an assisted living facility or nursing home, or specialized in-home hospice care. There are expensive services and medical costs can be high in the United States and other countries without a universal healthcare system, as anyone who ever got a surprise bill after they got their finger stitched up can attest. While insurance will often pick up a large percentage of the medical bills, if not all of them, Someone who is uninsured or underinsured when they die might leave behind a massive bill to be taken out of their estate. And that's before a whole lot of other costs. In 17 US states, the cost of dying averages over $20,000. In the UK, where high health bills are unlikely, it can still cost several thousand pounds. While heirs of the deceased can't be held responsible for medical bills if the estate can't cover it, many other costs have to be paid for out of pocket by the family which means that families dealing with the loss of a breadwinner may often have another challenge to deal with. So what are all these hidden costs? Well, the big one is something almost everyone who has said goodbye to a loved one will deal with, the funeral. The funeral industry has come a long way from when disposing of bodies was mostly a utilitarian industry, and today it's a $20 billion industry in the United States alone. Many funeral home providers offer full service from the moment of death to the conclusion of the burial ceremony, customizing services with mourners and personalized services don't come cheap. Planning a funeral is a big feat and often families are not up to managing it themselves, especially after a sudden and unexpected death. That means the funeral home and director will manage dozens of moving parts and help them select every part of what can be a very large event. For people with a lot of friends and family, a funeral can often resemble a wedding and what's needed. You'll need a large event facility either indoors or outdoors enough to hold everyone who wants to come. You'll want flowers and decorations often personalized and in many cases, families want catering for a memorial dinner. And that's before getting into one of the most important parts of the funeral. Gone are the days of a coffin essentially being a pine box. The coffin industry alone is worth over half a billion in the United States today, and shopping for one offers a lot of choice. Coffins are often made from fine wood and insulated with high-quality fabric. While this may seem like a waste given that it's going in the ground, many families want the coffin on display at the funeral and see a fine coffin as a testament to their love. An average coffin will cost at least $2,000, with high-end ones reaching five digits. And that's not the only preparation needed for a funeral. Funeral homes have someone on site trained in treating bodies and preserving them for funerals and burial. This is especially important for many people who want an open casket funeral. Have you ever been to a funeral where everyone is commenting that the deceased looks so natural and it looks just like they're sleeping? This isn't an accident, it's the work of a trained mortician who uses chemicals and makeup to keep the body from starting to decay too quickly and cover up any obvious injuries when possible. Not every funeral involves this. Some people choose a more natural burial, usually with a closed casket. But if you want the deceased to get the full makeover, it'll come with a cost. But that's not the biggest cost associated with funerals. Two words, real estate. The most important choice people will make when planning a funeral is where they want the deceased to be buried. This isn't just a physical choice, the burial plot will likely also become a gathering spot for the family in years to come. But many cemeteries are facing a major challenge, lack of space. The population is growing and the cost of getting a burial plot is getting higher and higher. Smaller plots can be as little as $500 at a public cemetery, but can go for up to $5,000 for sought-after locations. For those who want a mausoleum burial, it can be as high as $10,000 at high-end places. And that's before you decide what to put on top of it. It's been a long tradition to have a marker memorializing a gravesite. Sure, no one's going to go as over the top as the ancient Egyptian pharaohs, although it might be tempting to build a pyramid for your beloved childhood dog Sparky, but gravestones can be pretty ornate. If you wander through a cemetery, odds are you'll see a few towering obelisks or carefully sculpted angel statues. If you want a highly decorative gravestone, the cost can vary wildly, but standard headstones with a personalized inscription will start at a cost of $1,000 or more. This can add up to a lot. Is there a cheaper way? For many families, if the deceased didn't leave behind a big estate, it's time to make some tough decisions. While holding a proper tribute for their loved one is ideal, there are ways to make it more affordable. Smaller funerals or graveside services 
are ideal to cut costs, and many families decide to have an online component where family and friends who can't attend in person can pay their respects virtually. Flat metal or marble markers in the ground can be a lower cost alternative to headstones while still paying proper tribute with an inscription. But there's one choice that many people make to cut costs, sometimes cremation. The burning of remains instead of burying them has become a massive industry in its own right, with many funeral homes also hosting a crematorium. We all know a friend or family member who has grandma's ashes sitting on the mantelpiece, and we probably give it a wide berth and stare warily every time the cat gets a little too close. And for those who want the simplest and lowest cost option, a basic cremation can be had for as little as $800. But that doesn't mean that many people don't find surprising costs. Cremation is a specialized service, with crematorium workers dealing with extremely hot and powerful ovens that can reduce a human body to bone ash in a short time. The cost of the equipment and training adds up, and so does the equipment it comes with. The standard urn that is at a constant risk of spilling ashes everywhere is mostly a thing of the past, with most urns sold by funeral homes coming in with specialized seals to prevent accidents. And there are many specialized and artisan urns available that can cost more than 500 bucks. But some families want a more permanent option. Some families choose the best of both worlds, cremation and a burial plot that gives them a place to visit and pay their respects. These plots are smaller and can be marked with a marker or headstone, but can still be expensive, at least $350 at a public cemetery and as much as $2,500 for a prime spot at a private cemetery. Because urns or cremation vessels can be held anywhere, it's also common to choose an above-ground spot in a mausoleum, which usually is more expensive. Well, at least the deceased doesn't have to worry about any of this, right? Not exactly. Because the funeral industry has become so big and expensive, many people are starting to think about these questions long before they're gone. It's like planning in advance for a vacation that no one wants to take. No one wants to put their loved ones into debt to pay for their funeral. So they're starting to take some common sense measures to make sure that expensive funeral costs don't throw the family for a loop. But those usually involve some costs of their own, paying for their own death in advance. The first step is to get life insurance. This will ensure your loved ones a payout if you die under most circumstances. This is especially important for breadwinners and single-income families, even if they don't expect to die anytime soon. Of course, the problem is that insurance companies don't want to pay out, so life insurance becomes more and more expensive as people get older. A 10-year policy on a 90-year-old probably isn't a good investment for the company. Whole life insurance is available, but it can be very expensive. But if you don't want the family to have to pay any death-related costs, that can be achieved too. Most of the time, people walking into a funeral home are the family of the deceased. But sometimes it's a healthy and happy person looking to arrange a funeral, their own. Most funeral homes will arrange end-of-life plans for people years or even decades before it takes place, down to the slightest detail. Want to rickroll the guests? They'll put that in a funeral plan and file it away, although it might not seem as funny when you're 85. And you can pay in advance too, over installments for many years. If you go before it's fully paid off, your loved ones will only have a fraction of the costs, but in many cases there will be nothing left to pay. Of course, some people may make more unconventional arrangements to dodge costs. With cremation, many families choose not to keep the ashes forever. They'll take them home in a simple container without a formal ceremony or burial, and a while later once the entire family and extended circle can get together, they meet at a meaningful location to scatter the ashes. While this might seem disturbing to some, after all it's human remains being sprinkled in a public place, bone ash is biodegradable and considered harmless to the environment, so it's legal in all public places unless there are security issues. Private locations are dependent on permission of the owner, but that doesn't always stop people. A particularly popular spot is Disney's Haunted Mansion, as Disney-loving fans try to add a thousandth to the famous assortment of 999 grim grinning ghosts. But that's not the only low-cost option for burial or cremation. Some enterprising companies have started offering unconventional ways to use cremation ashes, as they pose no health hazard and mix into things easily. Did Grandma always love to paint? Her ashes can be mixed in with paint and used to create a work of art. Did Uncle Billy like to live it up? A company specializing in fireworks can create a custom batch including a pinch of his ashes to send him off in style. There are even biodegradable urns that are meant to be buried and contain a tree seed along with the ashes to create a tree out of a loved one's remains, a living headstone far bigger than any obelisk. Many of these options aren't cheap, but they're usually a fraction of traditional funeral and burial with all the frills. And it's likely to just continue going up. People are living longer, and that means they're more likely to need healthcare before they die. Cemeteries aren't easy to maintain, and the demand for burial plots is growing as the population does. And with many funeral homes offering digital services like online memorial walls, it's becoming a more skilled and versatile position all the time. That adds up to one thing. 
a growing and complicated sector that will fetch a high cost for its services. There are only two things certain in life, death and taxes, but until scientists manage to cure the first, the high cost of death might be the third certainty. For another unconventional way to dispose of remains, check out Composting Humans is now legal in these US states. Or try this video on for size instead.